AT&T Park is always a welcome sight to the Giants, but a not so welcome sight is Nolan Arenado in the batter's box. The Rockies third baseman has become a great A giant killer. And to keep up with Arenado, the Giants will need a little help from everybody. It's the entire Giants lineup against the one man wrecking crew. Giants Rockies next. The Giants are back home on this Thursday night as we get ready for Giants baseball. It's the Giants and Rockies in game one of this four game series. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well, a three and three road trip. The Giants are okay with that, but uh, they'd like to have a great homestand. And you do that with a win tonight, Mike, and uh, and you hand the ball to Matt Cain. And, and look, we've watched Matt Cain. He's due for a win. And, uh, and he needs to pitch well tonight. Well, and he's pitching against a team he's got great lifetime success against. 17 lifetime wins against the Colorado Rockies. And if you look back what the Rockies did the last three days in San Diego, they only scored six runs. So, uh, and, and if Kane is going to do well, you always think about Nolan Arenado and Carlos Gonzalez, the big hitters for this Rockies team. The guy that he has to watch out for is Charlie Blackman. He's got the best numbers against him. All right, Hunter Pence not in the lineup. A little minor back stuff going on. But uh, but it's Gregor Blanco in his place. All right, stay tuned. We'll take you to our CSN Barrier Studios for an update, and we'll do all of that right after this. On CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Taste the baconlicious sourdough bacon ranch combo only at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota. It's Toyota time for big savings on legendary Toyota quality. Take a test drive today. Toyota, let's go places. 
after playing 500 ball on the road, your San Francisco Giants have returned to the shores of McCovey Cove. They're ready to kick off a four game series against their NL West rivals, the Colorado Rockies. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Amy Gutierrez. Let's discuss Brandon Belt's nickname. He's known as the Baby Giraffe. I think that might be a misnomer. Maybe he should be called Big Boy Giraffe. That's how he's hitting the ball at the plate. He is our Togo's big play, the big way. As we look back to yesterday, Belt. Yeah, he takes Dan Straley deep for a solo home run. Earlier today, Bruce Bochy saying Belt continues to throw out quality at bat after quality at bat. Now, how hot has he been at the plate? Here's a look. He is batting 438, five extra base hits, 12 RBI, but the number that really stands out there, 14 walks. That proves how well he's seen the ball, how patient he's been at the plate. And Bruce Bochy putting him in the lineup tonight against a left-handed pitcher, Chris Russin. That's a huge vote of confidence. All right, here we go. Game one about to start shortly. Giants, Rockies, Kruk and Kite. We'll be back after these messages with lineups and first pitch. Stay with us. Giants Baseball on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Taste the baconlicious sourdough bacon ranch combo only at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota. It's Toyota time for big savings on legendary Toyota quality. Take a test drive today. Toyota, let's go places. After playing 500 ball on the road, your San Francisco Giants have returned to the shores of McCovey Cove. They're ready to kick off a four game series against their NL West rivals, the Colorado Rockies. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Amy Gutierrez. Let's discuss Brandon Belt's nickname. He's known as the Baby Giraffe. I think that might be a misnomer. Maybe he should be called Big Boy Giraffe. That's how he's hitting the ball at the plate. He is our Togo's big play, the big way. As we look back to yesterday, Belt. Yeah, he takes Dan Straley deep for a solo home run. Earlier today, Bruce Bochy saying Belt continues to throw out quality at bat after quality at bat. Now, how hot has he been at the plate? Here's a look. He is batting 438, five extra base hits, 12 RBI, but the number that really stands out there, 14 walks. That proves how well he's seen the ball, how patient he's been at the plate. And Bruce Bochy putting him in the lineup tonight against a left-handed pitcher, Chris Russin. That's a huge vote of confidence. All right, here we go. Game one about to start shortly.
shortly. Giants, Rockies, Crew and Kite. We'll be back after these messages with lineups and first pitch. Stay with us. Dug out as we get ready for Giants baseball. Our game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The boardwalk is open. Visit beachboardwalk.com for park hours. 62 degrees here at the yard. You see the winds are light, humidity at 70%, and it is overcast. Here's a lineup that Matt Cain will be facing. For Walt Weiss, it'll go like this. Charlie Blackman will lead it off, followed by Story Gonzalez, and then Nolan Arenado. And uh, you can see he's having another great season. It'll be Parr, Reynolds, and then Hunley, Chris Russon. He will hit eighth, and DJ LeMayhew will hit ninth. On the hill tonight for the Giants will be Matt Kane. Kane, 31 years of age, 6'3, 230 pounder. He's in his 11th year at the big league level. This is what he has done in five starts. 0 oh, 3 the 7 0 ERA. 21 strikeouts at 27 innings. That's good. Nine walks. When he's right, you're going to see a low 90s fastball. He will sink. He will cut. He's got a curveball slider and a changeup. Lifetime against these Rockies, he has had great success. 17 and 9 with a 3.41 ERA. And he will be wearing the Higantes jersey tonight, as all the Giants will, to celebrate. Yesterday's Cinco de Mayo. Hitters, they're watching every little thing. Let's take a look at the Giants defense playing behind Kane tonight, starting in the outfield. It'll be Williamson, Span, and Blanco. Hunter Pence with a little tightness in his back, going to get a day off, should play tomorrow. Crawford, Duffy on the left side of the infield. Tomlinson, Bell on the right side. Buster Posey, he'll be in the squad, putting down the signs. So game one of this four game series game one of this seven game homestand. Giants coming back. Three and three on this pass road trip. They're one game over 500. The Rockies are one game under 500. 
And on their trip, they're four and two. However, they've lost. They just finished losing two out of three in San Diego. So we're waiting. The umpires are waiting for the 7:15 start to indeed be 7:15. And now it looks like we're ready to go. So here's Blackman, and the first pitch of the ball game is on its way, and we get started with a call strike. So 7:15 indeed, right on time. As always here at AT&T Park, the next pitch to Blackman is outside for a ball. Behind the dish is Jim Reynolds, Nick Lentz, field in cold breath, CB Buckner from first to third. The 1 1 pitch is at the knees, 1 and 2. You'll see knee high, and you'll see belt high strikes from Reynolds. You're not going to get a lot of, of, of width on either corner. His zone can be tight. More of a hitter's umpire than a pitcher's umpire. Posey asked for a high fastball. That's what he get. It's two and two. Blackman hitting 240, a home run, five driven in. And he shoots this one right at Crawford, and that's how this game gets started. <laughs> Defense got him. Let's take a look at our Nissan keys to the game. And number one, you got to control Nolan Arenado. He is the leader in home runs in the National League, and he has torched the Giants last year. Hit over 40 home runs, had 10. Against the Giants, they have to control him. Number two, they need a good, strong outing from Matt Cana for him. At least get that ball into the seventh inning for him. That would cure a lot of things. And that is our Nissan keys to the game. Trevor Story hitting 255, 10 home runs, 21 driven in. There really is more to the numbers from Trevor Story. Is he's having a terrific season to start out as a rook, but on the downside, he struck out 42 times in 106 at bats. That's too many. And look, maybe he's going by the Bobby Bonds theory. I'm going to hit a lot of home runs and I'll make the outs the way I want to. I mean, but he's on a pace for 240 strikeouts. That would be historical. And he was assuming that that 2 0 pitch was going to be in the strike zone, and it wasn't. Well, Trevor Story lit it up in his first month in April. You take a look at the guys who have done that in their careers. George Scott, 1966, he had 10. And Jose Abreu came on the scene in 2014. He had 10 home runs. And Trevor Story tied him. Center field, his story got underneath this one. Two down. And that'll bring up Gonzalez. I think if you've got a lineup that have that has good hitters in it, you can have a guy that strikes out a lot. But this is also a Rockies team that that you know, they're built for offense, and they've got a number of guys that strike out a lot. Walt Weiss, the skipper of the Rockies. Yeah, I think they're built for the big inning. The big inning and the big fly, and there's a swing and a miss, and it's 0 1. And home runs could give you the big inning. That thing, too, when you go into Colorado, what's the one thing you always hear about Coors Field? Don't walk anybody. And because of that, guys get in that strike zone a little bit more, and I think these Rocky hitters do a good job of taking advantage of that. So it's a ball and a strike to Gonzalez. 327. He's got four home runs, 12 driven in. And this is blooped into center field, and it's going to fall. So Gonzalez with a bloop single, and that'll bring up Nolan Arenado. I mean, the bloop single gets Kane out of the stretch, or in the stretch, facing Arenado. And I, don't get too excited or worried about a bloop, but when you have the leading home run hitter in the major league stepping in and you have to face him out of the stretch, well, then that becomes a significant two out knock. Arenado, average wise, his numbers are not that good against Kane. 
But he does have a couple of doubles in a home run against Kane. He's three for 19. And the first pitch is down low. Now this is the last 14 games. Against the Giants. Against the Giants, 11 home runs, 30 RBIs. That's in 58 at bats. Hit a cool 448. And he does take advantage of count leverage. In this 2 0 count here, he will absolutely put all he's got into a swing. High and deep to left. And uh, gone. And no one's surprised. No one is surprised. And as Bruce Bochy goes to the water cooler. Well, I mean, the, the one guy that you say in the meeting is don't let Arenado beat you. And the pitch from Kane was just a hanging changeup. And that is right up there that when he makes contact, he is going to elevate. And he knew it. The Giants have been his get well team. So a bloop, a two out bloop, and then the home run. Para hitting at 280. 2 0 count, and he's looking for a mistake, and he gets one on a changeup. And he was not fooled with the off speed pitch at all. Out of play, stays at 0 and 2. Twelve home runs, now 27 RBIs for Arenado. This is down the left field line, and it's going to be up against the tarp. So it remains 0 and 2. Well, at that point, when a guy has a foul ball and he's thinking about throwing the stands, it turns everybody into a 12-year-old kid, yeah. even Dad. Absolutely. And a fair ball down the left field line. Williamson will get to it. And Parra has got a double. So a two out rally here for the for the Colorado Rockies. Well, it all started out with just a little bloop. Didn't get too upset about. Now all of a sudden you got two runs in and you're pitching for your life. Reynolds. 313, two home runs, eight driven in. Talk about Trevor Story. I mean, this is a guy who was doing exactly what Trevor Story is doing this year, Mark Reynolds. A guy who's always had great power, but he's always been a guy that strikes out. Two times, three times in his career, he's had over 200 strikeouts in a season. The most he's ever had was 223 strikeouts. But in that year, he had 44 home runs and 102 RBIs. Well, this year's numbers is average over 300. Foul into the glove of Posey. It's two balls and one strike. Reynolds, 239 home runs lifetime. Swing and a miss, two and two. Our original lineup had 
Nick Hunley to hit next, but hit Nick Hunley is not in the on deck circle. Looks like Tony Walters, the other catcher for these Rockies. So if there was indeed, and there obviously was a lineup change, this is the first we found out about it. Foul back. So Kane trying to get the Giants off the field. Driven to right, but foul. Well, there's the wide out in the seventh spot. That's the Rockies lineup card in their dugout. So indeed, Nick Hundley out, Tony Walters in. Out of play again. A lot of pitches. 27 throws on the night for Matt Kane. Pop up off his fist. Kane at the belt. And another 2 2 pitch to Reynolds. And it's low. So this next pitch to Reynolds is going to be. Number 10 in the at bat. It'll be number 30 on the night. All started on a what? Bloop single. A bloop. Bloops will kill you. Hit on the ground towards the hole. Duffy picks it up, throws in the dirt. Not in time, and the throw home, not in time. So Reynolds beats it out, and Parra scores from second. It's, it's unbelievable. If you're Matt Cain, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that's been happening to him every start. I mean, you get a runner at second base with two outs, and hit a ball to the third baseman, it gets caught in the infield, and you're thinking, the guy at second base is not going to score. But Brandon Belt thought he had the play and he kind of went up with his glove and tipped his cap to the umpire to show him that he had the ball. Meanwhile, Manny or Gerardo Parra, he, he never stopped. I mean, that's great base running from his perspective. There wasn't even close to a play at home. So here's Walters, late scratch. And he hits this one high into left center field. And that's going to end the inning. Three runs, four hits. Three nothing. Giants are coming up.
Here's the Giants lineup that will face Chris Russell. It'll be Span, Duffy, and Buster Posey. And Buster loves to hit against the Rockies. Bell, Crawford, Williamson. Kelby Tomlinson will hit seventh, Blanco, and then Kane. On the hill tonight for these Colorado Rockies will be the left-hander Chris Russell. Russell, 29 years of age. He's in his second year at the big league level. 6'295 pounder out of Detroit, Michigan. This is what he has done in five games, mostly out of the bullpen. 169 ERA. He's 1 0, 13 strikeouts, just 12 base runners allowed in 16 innings. And not going to really impress you with a lot of velocity, but he's got good movement and excellent command. He is a guy that's going to give you high 80s. Velocity in four different types of pitches. A fastball with two types of moves, a curveball, slider, and a changeup, and he'll throw anything at any time. So Span to lead it off, hitting 243. He's got a home run. He's got 14 driven in. Giants have been in this spot before, especially at home, and they've done a good job at coming back in games like this. So they've got their work cut out for him. As Span takes down low. It is a pretty confident offensive team right now and in today's lineup no pence. And the call strike. Giants are eight and six at home and they're eight and nine against the West. So not worried about the bunt anymore. Arenado at third base plays back. Not often you see a leadoff hitter get a shift played against him. It spans a guy. He'll hit the ball all over. And a scud, and it's two and two. <laughs> That's just for Jeremy Affel right there. Too much pine tar in your fingertips. But if you're Tony Walters, the catcher for the Rockies, you're thinking, seriously, what is that? He, he's thinking, now I know why Hunley's not playing. <laughs> uh, the life of a catcher. Hey, happy Cinco de Mayo yesterday. And celebrating tonight. Fair ball down the right field line. This will kick off that sidewall. And Spann's got a leadoff double. Take a look at the Rockies defensively, starting in the outfield from left to right. It'll be Para, Blackman, and Gonzalez, and you get really good arms on the corners with Para and Gonzalez, and a really good assist arm in center field with Blackman. Story and Arenado on the left side of the infield, LeMahieu and Reynolds on the right side. Tony Walters will be in the squad putting down the signs. So here's Duffy. Duffy hitting at 239 with a couple of home runs, nine driven in. And he takes a strike. Giants are a patient lineup. They want to see pitches. They'll have a plan on every pitch. They're very disciplined to the strike zone. And for the most part, they'll use the whole field. Russell wants to talk to Walters. Chris Russell has 14 and two-thirds scoreless innings going right now. It's one of the longest active streaks in the National League. His teammate Tyler Chatwood has 16 and a third. So you don't always think about the Rockies as, as offense. They got a couple guys who are red hot in their rotation. One one to Duffy with Buster Posey on deck, then Belt, then Crawford. Out of play, nothing in two. Rockies opened up this road trip, and it started out in Arizona, and they swept the D-backs. They won 
nine nothing five two and six three. Then they lost the next two in San Diego and one yesterday behind Tyler Chatwood who pitched very good yesterday. Base hit right field. Span's going to be held up. And Giants have runners at the corners. The uh, table setters have done their job. Roberto Kelly, the guy sir base coach, playing it the way you should when you have an arm like Carlos Gonzalez in, in right. He's a very strong arm. When you're down three runs, you don't want to run yourself into an out being overly aggressive. Down three. Not with a guy with a reputation of Gonzalez. Here's Buster Posey hitting at 315. Four home runs, nine driven in. So Russin going after Posey with belt to follow. Down low, one ball and no strikes. Buster three for nine lifetime against Russin. One of those hits a double. Two balls, no strikes. Mr. Posey in his career has done well against Colorado. One of the top five guys in Colorado Rockies history. Jeff Tony, Tony Gwynn, the only guys better. I want to be on a list with Tony Gwynn. Yeah, I know. What about Derek Bell? 358. Juan Pierre, 362. Two and zero to Posey. Buster down the left field line. That's a fair ball, and it's going to score Span. They're going to wave in Duffy. Here's the throw. I'm saying safe. I've never seen that before. Jim Reynolds, the plate umpire. I guess he wanted to keep it to himself. <laughs> okay. Right. Trevor Story's got a good arm. I mean, he's got a good relay arm. Check this call. So I guess it was so obvious yeah. we couldn't actually see no, from our we, perspective. We were blocked off by the umpire. Thank goodness we have our Expo. It's brought to you by your local Toyota dealer, and we didn't see, indeed, see that it was a no-brainer. So here's Belt. It's three to two. And belt line drive center field Blackman coming in and he's going to make the tumbling catch. So belt is gone. That's a nice play. Hardest one for a, an outfielder is the one hit right at you. It's tough to dive on a ball coming straight into you. And Blackman kind of goes down to his knees and kind of slides into it. And then his knee just sticks in the sod. And watch the right knee just plant and that tumbles him over. So here's Crawford. Crawford at 247 with three home runs, 10 driven in, two for seven in his career against Russin with a home run. Big swing. Matt Williamson to follow. So a Coors Field first inning. Yeah. Five runs in. Just two more outs to be able to add to it. Double, single, double, line drive center field out. Crawford waiting. 
down low. Two balls and a strike. Jim Reynolds wants some more baseballs, I think. Posey with his lead at second. And Buster back in easily. He's second in the league with runners in scoring position. Well, they've really been hot the last week at 311 as a group. The only team better is the Cardinals. But you know that's I think it has everything to do with the confidence that these guys have in each other. You go out there and feel like you have to be the guy to deliver. If it gets past you, it's going to be it's going to be dry. That's 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 a, it's tough to have a good season. It's tough to produce in that situation. But if you have the feeling that the guy behind you is going to pick you up, it frees you up. And that's kind of where they're at mentally as a group. Crawford ahead in the count, and he pulls it foul. Crawford. He's one of those guys in this Giants lineup that when he's ahead in the count, he does not get cheated. He will take a healthy rip. Well, it all has to do with balance. And he's got a good foundation. Legs are very solid, very quiet, lower body, but he, he's a tough hitter to get off his back leg with off speed stuff. Stays back well. On the ground, LeMahieu on the backhand, and he makes a nice play. And moving over to third is Posey. Yeah, that's two nice defensive plays this Rocky team has put out. I mean, that's not anything unusual. They're a very good defensive group. Ball hit well, 3 2, and LeMahieu has to slide into a high backhander, and from his knees, makes it look easy. Gold Glover, and this is. What gold glovers do. They take away base hits. So here's Mac Williamson. Posey at third. And it's down low. One ball and no strikes. Hey, San Francisco's here. I guess if you're not quite sure which player you want on the back of your uniform, you just go with San Francisco. And that could be that gentleman's last name. One ball and one strike. Good change up. And that's what Russell has to do. I mean, he can't challenge with fastballs and fastball counts. He's going to pitch off the fastball. Tapped. Foul. Williamson very happy that that did not roll fair. You're in a spot where you really kind of want to nudge it. Wouldn't be a good idea if you did it, but. Remember Lenny Randall when he blew the. Yeah. He was at the King Tome in Seattle. Down the third baseline. He was, he was playing third and he blew it foul. Then they made a rule. You can't do that anymore. Yeah, well. Two and two. Russell just stand down below the strike zone with soft stuff. Kelby Tomlinson, who's been red hot. He, he had a nice series in Cincinnati, six hits in those three games. Big tapper foul. 89 mile an hour fastball. That's about what you're going to get from Russell. And out swinging, and that'll end the inning. Giants' first three hitters, double, single, double, 
and they score two times. Rockies three, Giants two. on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by AAA. Get a free Giants all-season blanket. Restrictions apply. Go to AAA.com slash Giants or to a AAA branch for details. Blue Jays are in town Monday and Tuesday. It's Korean Heritage Night on Monday. Japanese Heritage Night on Tuesday. Then it's Day Baseball on Wednesday. SFGiants.com slash tickets. Here's Russin. Russin hitting at 143. He's one for seven. One and two. If I remember right, he's a guy that can swing the bat a little bit. Swing a lot. This is why Walt Weiss hasn't been in that eight spot. And then DJ the Mayhew hit in the ninth spot. Taps this one foul to stay alive. And, and I think it, it's kind of a prerequisite that if you're going to bat your pitcher eighth, he's, he's got to have a clue with the bat. A clue. And Russin has a clue. So that's what you would put in the scouting report. Has a clue. Has a clue. Hunter Pence a day off likely to be back in the lineup tomorrow night he has a little tenderness in his back. Yeah, it's traveled back from Ohio last night Cincinnati long flight woke up stiff. Slowly hit. And Russell's retired let's check in with Amy G Amy. All right gentlemen some injury updates as you mentioned earlier Hunter Pence out with some back tension he is fine he's going to be back in the lineup tomorrow Joe Panic took BP today ran the bases but she said he hopes to have panic start tomorrow both Pence and panic available off the bench this evening and for Pagan likely he will not play in this series against the Rockies Boach hoping to get him a start against the Toronto Blue Jays when they come to town Dwayne. All right well that's good news Amy's got the good news thing going on already. Good scoopage. We'll find out throughout the course of the game if she's just going to be the good news person today. Lemayhu hitting at 292. A little bit of ownage on Matt Kane. There's the curveball and a foul at the plate. Six for 18, double home run. Like Arenado seems to do his best work against the Giants. Good player. Good guy, 6'4. 
don't see that many six foot four inch second baseman. Especially gold glove winners. Meanwhile, if you're looking for a helmet full of nachos. <laughs> driven to right. Blanco's going to spin around and watch it sail over his head. And LeMahieu will stop at second. And that's what LeMahieu will do. I mean, that, that was a two strike at bat. A high fastball away, and he's very content to go that way. Two seed fastball just up. And he jumps on the mistake for a tall hitter. That's right in the wheelhouse. And a nice high back shoulder through the swing. Kept his hand on top nicely. Here's Charlie Blackman. Yes, we can. He's got the positive vibe going. Blackman hit a line drive right at Crawford, who was playing right behind the bag at second. As Blackman tries to bunt, and he bunts it foul. Story to follow. Kane gets a sign from Posey. And he lays down another bunt, and Posey's going to throw him out. And when that happens, then it's a bad play. Because now there's two outs. Are you thinking that when you're running down the first baseline? Well, yeah, but. I don't even do that, and I was a non-RBI guy. But think about this. I mean, Charlie Blackman coming to this game, he had the best history lifetime against Kane. And this is an RBI situation. I mean, he obviously sees Matt Kane well. He's hit 353 and 17 at bats. That's six for 17. That's before the game. Well, I look, I'm I don't know Charlie Blackman at all, but it just makes it look like it's a selfish play. And I know he's not a selfish player, but. Story hit a fly ball to center field in the first inning. Fouls it back, one ball and one strike. He's got bat speed, there's no doubt about that. Uh, yeah, he definitely lets it fly. Story came on the scene and he caught the attention of everybody in this game. And a base hit. And another pitch out over the plate, and it's four to two. So a two out base hit for Trevor Story. All of the runs for the Rockies tonight have come in two outs. And that's the type of outing that gnaws on a big league pitcher. So here's Gonzalez. Gonzalez hit a bloop single in the first inning. Right in the middle of the diamond for Crawford, and he'll put it away, and that'll end the inning. Rockies score a run. It's 4 2. Tomlinson to lead it off.
CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Casino Matrix, Silicon Valley's best bet for gaming, food and fun 24-7. Four two Rockies, Tomlinson, Blanco, and Kane here to hit in the second. And Tomlinson tries to bunt his way on, and he bunts it foul. Well, it is happy Cinco de Mayo day. We were on the 2013 Finnerty's team bus. Yep. Good looking lid. You know that hat right there, you can either pull it off or you can't pull it off. There is no in between. Yeah, the only thing I would do with that hat is put chips in it. Yeah. Outside corner, one and two. Baseball helmets and sombreros. Put chips in it. Yeah, babe. Tap to Arenado. And Tomlinson's retired. Well, fans, in honor of Cinco de Mayo, we're offering five bucks off all tickets for all May games. Just go to sfgiants.com slash tickets and enter Cinco at checkout. This limited time offer ends tonight at midnight. So happy Cinco. Here's Blanco hitting at 308. He's two for three lifetime against. Chris Russin. There's the Mike Kruko big hit, and he even signed it. There you go, Mike. There's down low to Blanco. He did throw a sombrero on that head right there. My head. Oh, lurk, there you are. Lurking. You put a sombrero on that head, too. Creeper guy, forehead signature. <laughs> yeah. Two balls, no strikes to Blanco. Blanco breaks his bat. LeMayhew will charge and throw, and they didn't get him. Well, I'm sure they'll replay it. You know, they always say if you run through the bag, you get there faster than if you dive, but I don't know, man. I mean, I, I think it's an easier call for the umpires if you run through the bag. He definitely beats it out. We're going to make that our forward right choice. It, it looks cooler. He just sort of slid right out of the picture there. Here's Kane. He's going to play the butt. And this is going to be foul. All right, one more look at the Blanco slide. It's all risky, though, Mike, when you do that. Oh, you jam your wrist, you can snap your hand back. Like that? Yeah. Our Ford right choice. I think he's taking inventory over there at first base, too. Good bunt. So Kane gets the job done. Well, see, they've got their sombreros on. They're rocking it. Yes, they do. Cinco. But the guy next to him, you think he's into it? Not yet. He's into the game. He's into Dave Fleming on the radio side. He's into popcorn. I bet you if he was, I don't know what, 35 years younger, he'd be into it. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, those were the days. You're spam. You know, when you're cute, you can put anything on your head, you're fine. Yep. 
Span with a swing and a miss. He doubled down the first base line in the first inning. Don't see him swinging too many first pitches. So Russ is going to take a little walk. Think about what's going on here. Control the tempo. He's not in any hurry. Slowing things down with a runner at score position. Rockies bring their outfielders in. It's a pretty shallow set. One and two. Band reaches, it'll be Duffy who's on deck. Ball gets away. Blanco to third. Well, that's significant. We've already seen Russell have a scud that bounced about 10 feet out in front of home plate. So if you can get a base runner over to third base, you never know. Ball hits on top of home plate and skims. And that is a catcher's nightmare right there. And yeah, then it hit Jim Reynolds' shin guard. Two balls, two strikes to. Denard Span with Blanco at third. That foul will do it again. 90 miles an hour right on the inside corner, so a little reach back velocity there for Russell. You think of Bernard Span as kind of a singles guy, that contact guy, but every once in a while he'll put a charge in the one and he'll, he'll hit it as far as anybody. Most of his home runs will go to right field, pole side. But he's got some pop. You have to respect that if you're pitching against him. And he stays alive. Pitch number 40 for Chris Russell. Down the right field line, fair ball. Blanco scores. Span with his second double of the game, and it's four to three. Nice two strike, two out, swing at the bat that puts a run on the board. Little slider that he leaves middle in. They set the target away. You see Walters, the catcher, reaching back. That's a mislocation. And right there to gobble it up with Span. You're right. It does have a Coors Field feel to it. It does. So here's Duffy. Duffy singled and scored in the first inning. Hey, it's single to mile. Stuff like that happens. On the ground towards the hole. Story a long throw, and they get Duffy, and that's going to end the inning. Giants a little closer. It's 4 3.
Coverage of baseball is brought to you by T-Mobile. We'll look back on April 14th of last year. Check out this catch by Nolan Arenado in foul territory as he goes over the tarp into the seats. And then if I recall he almost threw somebody out on the bases. Arenado jacked one out in the first inning. Here he takes a curveball for a call strike. On the ground to Duffy. And Duffy will throw him out. Well, you breathe a sigh of relief when he gets retired, don't you? Absolutely. Well, Warriors playoff central. That's right. Warriors take on Blazer game three as there's hour long coverage beginning at 4 30 p.m. on Saturday right here on CSN Area. Before and after every Warriors playoff game, Papa St. Roz and they provide in depth coverage. Home of the authentic Warriors fan is CSN. Here's Parra who doubled in the first inning. All right, King broke out the curveball. That's right. You've got to feed the boiler. Remember that. All right, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Foul back. Curveball. Fastball. Matt Kane when he came into the league. Yeah, two pitch guy. He was a fastball curveball guy. Picked up the cutter. He picked up the slider. He picked up the change up. Picked up a two seam fastball. I mean, he's 31 years old in his 11th year. So here's an idea how young he was. Little pop up that Crawford's backpedaling on. And that'll bring up Reynolds. You can't do it. Attitude, baby. That whole section's got it. You can't do it. Didn't Rob Schneider say that? Yes, I believe in a. I don't remember the name of the movie, but it was a football movie. Reynolds singled in the first. Curveball. Well, was that a curveball? Yes, it was. And I think nowadays you're more likely to see that curveball on a first pitch than you are in a two strike count. Steals strikes with it. Skied to left. Seven pitches, all strikes, and Kane with his best inning. Posey, Bell, Crawford, Williamson, Toplin, Blanco coming up. CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Clipper. 
A million Bay Area Transit riders agree using Clipper is easier than using cash. Rockies with a 4-3 lead. And here's Buster Posey. Buster doubled and knocked in a pair of runs in the first. Now four for ten lifetime against Russin. And a base hit for Buster Posey. All right, let's go to good news, Amy G. A very good news is Cinco de Mayo. That means it's something that the Giants get to celebrate. And celebrating is something they do really well. We're going to make this our healthy dose of goodness. It's brought to us by Eric's Deli Cafe. Gentlemen, I spent some time with Sergio Romo, of course, of Mexican descent. And he said that it's so cool to be part of the Giants organization because not only are they rich in Latin tradition, they're rich in tradition in general. And to have his name on a list to play for the same organization as Hall of Famers Orlando Cepeda and Juan Marichal is a true honor. It's humbling, and he said it's quite an accomplishment. Gentlemen. Indeed. Good stuff. Here's Belt. And Belt with a base hit to right field. Posey is going to drop anchor. No oh, wise decision. Tell you what, everybody brought their hitting shoes tonight. Swinging shoes. Here's Crawford. First pitch. A little two seed fastball barrels it and yanks it into right field. You know, Posey, I mean, he's average speed at best, but you're just not going to take on Gonzalez in right field. His arm's just too good. Don't make that first out at third. Don't do that. First or third out, do not make it a third. Dave Fleming will be in here with Mike, innings four, five, and six. John Miller is on assignment. Don't get too goofy now. You're in a happy mood. Hey, he's trying to watch a game. It's Cinco de Mayo. Come on. We used to celebrate that on the farm. Milk an extra cow or two. Yeah. That's how you roll in Racine, Wisconsin. Crawford hit a ball sharply that LeMahieu went to his right and made a really nice play on it. Here a swing and a miss. Way outside. Nice play, Walters. It's one ball and one strike. Posey and Belt aboard. Nobody out. Russell in the 1 1 to Brandon Crawford. And Crawford ropes one into right field, a base hit. Here comes Posey. Here's that good arm. And they got him. And uh, Well, you're allowed to block the plate if the plate brings you into the play. And you can see as he gets the ball, yeah, kind of well. leans right into it. I mean, this is something that if they determine that the momentum of the play comes into it, but he seals off that lane and then winds up being a tremendous throw from Carlos Gonzalez and a nice play from Walters to short hop. I mean, that's the only way he could go out and get it. It kind of did indeed take him into the play. All legal. So here's Mac Williamson. Three straight hits in a row. It's still four to three. Well, we've been talking about Gonzalez's arm. You got a chance to see it firsthand there.
Williamson struck out, saw a lot of soft stuff in the first inning. One ball and one strike. As long as he's swinging at soft stuff down underneath the strike zone, he's going to see a steady diet of it. One after another. Change up, sinkers, curveball, sliders, it's all going to go low. Double play ball. And that'll end the inning. Dave Fleming will be in. I'll see you back here in the seventh. It's 4 3 Rockies. Go to csnbayarea.com slash AST and vote for the 2016 All-Star Teacher brought to you by Provident Credit Union. The 10th season of the CSN All-Star Teacher Program recognizes that teachers do indeed make a major difference. This winner will receive $20,000 for his or her school. So vote csnbayarea.com slash AST. All-Star Teacher AST. AST, I got it. Hi, well, Mike. Well, it's 4-3. <laughs> Yeah, as we have a one pitch out from Tony Walters and here joining us now. Dave Fleming just do some play by play. I'm I, I'm, I'm good. I'll sit over here and, and listen to you. Hey, I had Cinco de Mayo yesterday earlier in the broadcast. So you know, friends don't let friends broadcast tired. Yeah, well, it's easy to be a little tired after a long road trip. The one thing I will say and we talked to Bochi about this because we felt this way. It was so nice to get back last night at a pretty decent hour. It was almost like a, a, a night off. You got home, could kind of veg out at home. Uh, Bruce Bochy felt like everybody got recharged by that night last night. It was a total gift, and uh, you know, getaway day is always a day that you don't trust. Especially when you're coming out of the Midwest this time of year, you know there's rain everywhere. But getaway day when you're coming back home, especially, you know, there's no day off between yesterday and today. 0 oh, 2 to the pitcher Russin and what you hope for is that you have a game that's quick and you don't have any interruptions you, you can start on time and when we woke up yesterday we were thinking that had no chance of happening as it turned out the Giants set records getting back here and everybody, we landed at around what seven o'clock that one is fouled off by Russin and guys actually had a chance to spend a little time with their families very nice. You can see the kids before bedtime or or even just sit down in your own sofa and watch a movie, watch some TV, whatever. Just have a night to kind of unplug. And there aren't many of those in the course of a long baseball season. It's not a complaint. It's not a real hardship. But I think when you grind it out day after day, the pressure of the big leagues. Just a chance to veg out a little bit. It's needed. 
Russell on the ground Crawford. Who's really been playing great defense. Not that that's a surprise. <laughs> on this last road trip he made so many beautiful plays. Giants in general have really played great defensively. They rank second in the National League. Their fielding percentage 990 second only to the Washington Nationals. Giants have only made 11 errors on the year now. Now that we say that you know what's coming but. In regards to Crawford he's playing like a gold glover. Which he is. And that he is. DJ LeMayhew first pitch strike from Kane. And Kane's retired six in a row now. That one is a base hit up the middle. There have been a lot of pitches like that just up. The Rockies aren't missing those tonight. Well they've been a threat with two outs. I mean there was two quick outs in the first inning all of a sudden whoop, they throw a three spot up there and then they scored one after two outs in the second. And here a mistake up is exactly what you're talking about. So with two outs here come the Rockies. Now what do you think the chances that Charlie Blackman's going to bunt here are. I know. <laughs> I mean, so I, we kind of questioned that decision to bunt. It wound up they gave him a sacrifice for it, which I did I they really they did. I don't think it's the right call. Oh my goodness. No way. I'm going to leave that one off the scorecard. They may, they may revisit that one. I didn't put it in. Rockies with two outs the best hitting team in the National League last season they hit 254 so they've really improved in that category this year. So let's see. Against Blackman. That one right at the knees for a called strike. Blackman the first hitter of the game hit a bullet up the middle and Brandon Crawford was right there beautiful defensive positioning. Got to pay attention to DJ Mayhew at first base he can steal and this is a really a steel situation not going this time and that's a ball and it's a steel situation because if LeMahieu is successful he's in scoring position if he's not successful then you start off next inning with your leadoff hitter Blackman coming up first good point LeMahieu has five steals already this year he's been running a little more frequently been caught twice that one is hit again right towards short. That was not an easy play. Picked off a short hop backhand style, and Crawford does it again. So the Rockies are retired. Tomlinson leads off when we come back. Authority of the San Francisco Giants. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates, LLC. Giants fans, did you know that NBC Bay Area recently improved its over the air signal so more people can tune in with antennas? For instructions on how to rescan your TV, visit NBCBayArea.com slash rescan, R E S C A N. Check it out and tell a friend. Now you know. 
good spot up above that uh, 24 foot high wall not in right field on a beautiful San Francisco night Giants back home trailing the Rockies by a run. Kelby Tomlinson takes a strike. They really are cool seats out there. One playoff. I think it was 2010. We had seats out there for my family. They loved it. Here's a curve. Watch past Arenado down the left field line. Tomlinson will use that speed. Parra has got a good arm, but Tomlinson slides in safely. Well, I mean, you just don't challenge the corner outfielders in Colorado. Gerardo Parra, Carlos Gonzalez, their fantastic arms. And apparently, Kelby Thomason did not get the message. When that ball left his bat, he was thinking two bags, and he's got great speed, and he needed every bit of it. You know, watch how Parra gets over, gets sets up. I mean, this is beautiful footwork. And that's the big leagues right there. You can't make a play from left field to second base any better than that. And if Thomason, who's the fastest giant, doesn't kick it gear, he's out. That was a great play. Maybe just feeling frisky when you get a ball by Arenado. It's like, well, I got to try for two. Right now, he's thinking, man, I need to make this. <laughs> yeah. Good hustle. So now Blanco. He swings, and it's a little soft roller out toward second base. That's the shortstop there to field it. Trevor Story throws him out. Now, in a different spot in the order, great play. You get that tying run to third, only one out. With the pitcher coming up, it, it's a little bit different, but still a chance for Matt Kane to help his own cause. Well, and, and here's where you can help help yourself. Rocky's going to jam the infield, play it in shallow. But remember, you've got outstanding speed with Kelby Tomlinson at third base. And one thing the Giants do on occasion, if you have a good bunter in that batter's box, and Kane's a good bunter, is put on a safety squeeze. And if you're going to go safety squeeze, you either bunt it back to the. You ideally, you want to bunt it, you know, down the line. But you don't want to take on it, Nolan Arenado, the Gold Glover. Better to try Reynolds at first base, who's not a bad fielding first baseman either. So if you're going to go that route, it's got to be a good bunt. ABA, anybody but Arenado. Don't bunt it there. He's not bunting, and he spins himself around. Strike one. So that doesn't mean they wouldn't try it here. Don't bunt it to that guy. Well, if it's going to happen, it's going to be a squeeze. You're going to get the sign from Roberto Kelly, and as a pitcher or whoever's hitting, you have to ha answer. There has to be a sign back. You have to go up the bat with your hand or touch your hat. Not bunny. He takes one down and in. Uh, Roberto Kelly will go over and he'll stand next to Kelby Tomlinson. And he'll tell him what the play is on. Kane, who received the play, if indeed it is on, he has to signal that he's got the sign. Everybody has to know. That's a straight suicide squeeze. A little different on a safety squeeze. Tomlinson not breaking for the plate. That's called strike two. Kane didn't think so. Fastball, four seamer right at the belt. Generous strike. Tying run at third, one out. The one two. And Kane chases in the dirt, strike three. Not that time for Kane. Second strikeout for Russin, and now it's up to that guy who has had a good night at the plate. Well, he really has. His last at, at bat, two strike, two out, double. Couple of doubles on the night. A two strike, two out, double produced a run. Being asked to do it again. So we'll see if he can. Driven in 15 runs this year. He's take advantage of these chances. That one over the outside for a called strike with the first pitch fastball. Well, in the last at bat, they set an outside target up with a slider, and Russin missed it middle in, and Span jumped on the mistake. It's like Russin is going to stay away if he misses, miss off the plate. Because it's very clear that Span's seen him well tonight. Tops that one foul 0 2. Mm. 
Nachos. They're not in a helmet this time. <laughs> yeah, every time you see that, you just want to go, yeah? Hey. Listen to the kite over on the radio side. Yep, they got their Lucio Cinco de Mayo bobblehead today. 0 2 Span rolls one foul. Oh, pretty good breaking ball from Russin. Span did well to stay alive. Away, 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 away. See that shift on on the infield. Much different alignment for the Rockies in the outfield. Now Russell steps off, looks over to third. You know, we're talking about that shift put on Span. You just don't see that many shifts put on a leadoff. That you don't. Low for ball one. You do wonder if they keep, if teams keep doing that against him, if we'll start to see some attempts by Span, whose primary job, look, tonight he's been a uh, an extra base machine, a run producer, but his primary job, get on base. Teams keep doing that to him, whether he would try to use a uh, push bunt, try to beat that shift, however he could do it. He wants it down in the dirt. Slider. He throws it in the dirt and a nice save by Walters, the catcher. Yeah, he earned his paycheck there. That's a nice block. One thing good about a slider or a curveball is that, and you can see the little spin on it, it's got a little red dot on it. That tells you it's a, a slider. They're predictable and they'll come back to you. So you know which way they're going to go. They're going to come up. And it makes it easier pitches to block than fastballs and splits. Those pitches can stay down. Much more difficult, especially with the higher velocity on the fastball. Well, who, who knows? Maybe Walter's going out there to, to, to just make sure Russin's got confidence. If he does it again, he'll block it again. That's exactly what he told them. Throw that thing down there, I'll block it. But you want to hear that from your catcher. Because you get speed at third, and Tomlinson will be poised. If it gets away from the catcher, even by a little bit, I think he'll try to score. Two and two to span. That one high and tight. Ball three. It's having a good at bat. Yeah, I think they throw that pitch because they want to set up another slider away. Walters checking out the feet of span, seeing where he's getting that box. Yeah. Walter suggested a slider, and it looked like Russell shook it off. So we'll see what they indeed come back with. Slider away, curveball, change up. He ran through the whole garden right there. Yeah. What else do we got? Anything else? He's wondering what the heck. I, I'm out of fingers. Serious business. Killing me back here. Did we come up with a new pitch? That I don't know about. Well, you got to believe in what you're going to throw. He's got a real specific idea. No, not that. No. Okay. So here we go. Off speed down and away. Now he's the last talk about it. But hey, look, it's just a you know, one run ball game, and the tight runs 90 feet away. You want to be on the same page. If he keeps calling a slider, you know, the thing about sliders is you may throw a slider and you can't throw another one. Your arm's saying, no, I don't, I, uh, even if it's the right pitch, sliders can give you a message after you throw one that you, yeah, you can't throw this for a couple pitches. And that may be what Russell just said. Well, it's a battle. Denard Span, already two for two, and now time. I guess that was Span. So I think he wants to go fastball away. 
We've gone about two minutes since a pitch was thrown. And he struck him out. He went down and away. Looked like the cutter, a real hard slider. Good pitch. Big boys coming up for the Rockies. When we come back, they lead by one. Our Geico quote, and we will uh, quote the former Giants pitcher, and who knows, Tim Lincecum. He said it to John Amon of MLB Network on uh, the pitching situation in San Francisco. I know the Giants have five or six starters, so I know I may have to look elsewhere. I know what I'm fighting for, and I'm fighting to get back to starting. He will have his showcase, much anticipated and long awaited showcase, tomorrow from Scottsdale Stadium. And uh, CSN Bay Area is going to stream that. I, I think right around 2:30 ish Pacific time. If you want to check it out online, I bet a lot of Giants fans will do just that. Well, I'll be watching. Very curious in what they're going to look for with Lenskin. Flat out is velocity. He says he's healthy. That hip, two-time Cy Young Award winner, one of the all-time great Giants pitchers. And he and this guy were quite a tandem for a long while. Matt Kane, Tim Lincecum at the top of the rotation, and uh, big parts of all three of those. Back to that game against the Atlantic Braves in 2010. It was just an absolute, incredibly dominant performance by Lincecum in his first start. 0 2, way outside the story. I mean, I would argue, and maybe nobody would argue with me, that that's one of the all time dominant. Postseason starts by anybody in history. It was that good. It was that good. He was that good. One, two, story hammers one to deep left center field, and it is gone. Another two strike hit for Colorado, and this one goes over the wall. I don't think this was a hanger, though. I mean, this, this is pretty impressive swing of the bat. I mean, you get an idea as to why this guy's got 11 home runs on this swing. He set the target away. Upon further review, that was a hanger. And it was right out over the plate. Still, it didn't look like he had both cheeks in it. Strong dude. And there's the hang. It was on the outside corner, but it was up. So, Vin Mazzaro heading down to the Giants' bullpen. First hitter of the inning, and the Rockies pad that lead. It's five to three. Another home run for the rookie. Set an all time National League record for rookie home runs in the first month of a year. Now, Gonzalez down the left field line. That's going to be a hit. Williamson will pick it up after a third bounce. No. Rolls away from him. I'm not sure he had a real chance to get Gonzalez anyway. But that took away any chance. It's a double for Cargo. 
Well, they were playing in the left center field gap, and they were giving the line to Cargo. He simply hit away from the defense. So Dave Rigetti going to come out. This meeting on the mound brought to you by Ring Central. Business communications made simple. And this is a conversation that's just killing time. Just give Vin Mazzaro a chance. Kane 72 pitches into it. And the concern I'm sure that Rigetti is going to have about this performance from Kane is that there have been too many mistakes to location. Yep. Rockies are not the type of team that you can make mistakes up out over the plate. Well, Matt Kane's career, not a lot of nine hit, no strikeout lines. He has struggled through this one really from the start, and now he's got to go up against this guy, which is no fun for any pitcher. He hit a two run homer in the first. He's got 12 to lead everybody in the National League. Runner at second, nobody out. That's a strike over the outside. Well, the cutter saw the numbers for Story and Arenado. Both guys have homered in this game tonight against Kane. Rank one and two of the National League in home runs. Well, that power travels. It's not just Coors Field power from those two guys. He got him to chase. Strike two. Mazzaro getting ready quickly. Still a long, long way to go in this game. It's only the top of the fifth. Arenado somehow made contact with that pitch. <laughs> I mean, that pitch was a foot outside, shoulder high. Yeah, that's almost Pablo Sandoval like. That's exactly what it was like. <laughs> I mean, he's in the swing mode here. I mean, that wasn't that far away from the barrel either. I mean, that was pretty close to the sweet spot. It's a little scary. 0 2, 1 and 2. Hit that one, Meat. Yeah, <laughs> well, you guys have talked about it a lot already. The, but the, uh, the numbers in terms of the home runs and the str he's he's now got more home runs than strikeouts. He's not swinging and missing. One two somehow got the bat on that one which was way up about head high. Was back in the first. That was a 2 0 change up that just kind of went middle end right up there above the belt. A mistake and he jumped on it. And you make a mistake to him you're just going to pay period. That's just the way it is. He's been that good. One two and he got the bat on the ball but to Crawford who throws low and Belt can't pick it out. Now Belt on the ricochet the throw to third too late and everybody's safe. And that is a rare mistake for Brandon Crawford. And somehow they announced E5. That's not an E5. Well, that's an E6. Now they've changed it. Just a short hop. And Crawford's so accurate normally with his arm. It's it, it catches by surprise when he puts one of the dirt. That, not a whole lot the belt could do. He did a good job of keeping it in front of him, actually. Yeah, that was not an easy pick. So still nobody out. That was. That should be one out runner at second. Now you get nobody out first and third. And Gerardo Parra smashes one back up the middle base hit. Well, that scores Gonzalez. It is six to three. And that's going to do it for Matt Cain. So the Giants will make the pitching change. The Rockies have knocked the Giants starter out. Here in the fifth, Vin Mazzaro's coming in when it's time for a change. Think speedy oil change and auto service, your oil change tune up and brake experts. We'll be back after this.
right here at AT&T Park June 7th and 8th the Red Sox are coming for a two game series and later that month June 27th to 28th we welcome the Oakland Athletics to the other side of the bay right here at AT&T Park tickets are going fast right now for each of these series you can purchase your tickets at sfgiants.com slash tickets Pitching change for the Giants. Rockies knock Kane out, and now Vin Mazzaro will pitch at home in that Giants uniform for the first time. Well, he's a sinker slider guy. He's also got a changeup, but he's definitely a pitcher that can get two outs with one pitch. And that's what he's looking for right now double play to calm the sitting down. How about three outs with one pitch? Well, hey, it's Cinco de Mayo. Why not? To get greedy. If you're going to wish. Fastball, triple play, and a margarita. I, I'm, I'm with you. I like that combo. I like the way you think. Reynolds, who had a base hit to knock in a run in the first, it was an infield hit, and has also flied out. Having a good year. Slider for a ball. You get that pitch down. Yep. Reynolds. Good mistake hitter has always been a good mistake hitter, and that was a mistake. That one misses in two and one. Kind of situation where you, you want to use a base on balls here. Do not want to walk somebody over to third base. With less than two outs. That one is on the ground. We'll see if they can turn two. Tomlinson will get nobody. That's the second error of the inning for the Giants infield defense. Well, it, you, know, you just can't give a good offense like the Rockies extra outs. This ball just hits him low in the heel. Like he was thinking about how he was going to get his feet in position to try and get the double play. Well, now it's set up for a big inning. So Giants need another pitch like that, and this time to convert it into an out or more. And Walters is, I mean, he's a catcher, but he runs well. Not an easy guy to double up. He does. Squares around like he might bunt. Duffy wasn't near the bag. Suppose he came up like he might throw behind the runner Arenado at third. You got the pitcher on deck. Bullpen is quiet for Colorado. And obviously, for lots of reasons, this becomes just a huge hitter in this game. Good pitch. Now for Mazzaro, though, you're still pitching for the ground ball here. You're still trying to minimize the damage. Rockies already have a two spot on the board, but there's nobody out with the bases loaded. You're trying to get that double play. If you get to a two strike count, then you could take a shot at trying to strike him out. Foul ball strike two and the bat went flying almost took out the pitcher in the on deck circle. And Russell had to head for cover. One and two. Up and away. Easy take there for Walters. You throw a pitch like that in a one two count, you're a little upset at yourself. Don't want to give guys easy takes when it's one two, oh two. You want to throw something up there inviting, get them to chase. That one is popped up. It's going to drift out of play though. Duffy and Crawford chased after it. We have a winner, but he got it.
Good speed at second in para. Reynolds not a real fast runner at first. You got the force play everywhere. Two runs already in. It's still nobody out. Another 2 2. That one is ripped down the right field line. And now it's going to be a big inning. Blanco has to dig it out against the wall. Arenado scores. Par right behind him. 8 to 3 Rockies. Well, that's how you take advantage of mistakes. If teams are going to give you extra outs. You take advantage of it, and as you said, I mean, this is this inning has gone large. The slider has just got some hang for it from Mazzaro. It's just not got any snap in at all. That's like a cement mixer. And a two strike count, Walters is up there protecting, and he almost knocks it out of here. Yep, and you made note of that the very first pitch he threw, that, that first slider, or for maybe the second pitch he threw, but the first slider. And he's going to get that. Down now, Russin squaring around to bunt. He'll pull the bat back and take a ball. Sinker misses. And the Giants have nine hits and three runs in the first four innings, and they're down five. And trying to keep it that way. They've also made two errors. Yep. Chops at it. Posey foul ball. And the Giants making errors. I mean, that just doesn't happen. They've been so good with the gloves. I mean, they've made just one error in their last 10 games. 11 errors total on the season. And one game had three errors in it. So, I mean, they've been really consistent. Tonight, a breakdown. And it's happened in this inning, both errors. And that's when you can really run into a crooked number. That same kind of play. Tomlinson, a diving, smothering stop. There's the first out. Nice play. And he's still thinking about the one he missed. Here's LeMayhew. You got to move on. And Tomlinson, to his credit, not an easy play at all, made it. And that's not that easy to do is to, to move on. When your mind's still on the play, but you've got to wipe it out. Here's another guy, not Arenado level, but he seems to wear out the Giants. He's two for two tonight. That one in the dirt, blocked by Posey. You walk him here, that's not the end of the world. And that's kind of how you go out him. Throw a couple balls in the dirt. If he wants to try and help you and swing out of it, not a problem. If you walk him, it sets up the force. And you could do that when you have a strike throw and sinker ball like Mazzaro. No reason to challenge, especially in the middle of the strike zone here. Not with this guy. LeMahieu's batting average in his career. He's played a lot of games in this ballpark. In this park is up around 330. It's 2 and 0. Oh. Look how many chances both sides have had with runners in scoring position. Well, you take a four for 12. Sure. Not a problem. Four for seven, though. That's lights out. Infield in, first base open. One out. That one is into right field. Another hit for LeMayhew. That'll score one. The stop sign for the catcher, Walters. Nine to three. It's got such a good opposite field approach. And you know, it doesn't change if he's hitting a 2 0 count or an 0 2 count. That's the kind of swing that's built for average. And his three hits tonight once again has him up over 300, hitting 315 now. So here's Blackman. And right now, Vin Mazzaro, and part of it is the error committed uh, immediately when he came in the game, but struggling to put the ball where he wants it to be. Blackman's 0 for 3. He's kind of been left out. Everybody else for the Rockies has been a major contributor. Not anymore. That's a base hit left center field. Walters will score. Over to third, LeMayhew. The throw comes back in, but into second easily. Blackman 
10 on the board for Colorado with one out in the fifth inning. And still going. They batted around before Trevor Story will come up. Another meeting on the mound. Well, I mean, right now Mazzaro doesn't have the slider, and you know he's a three-pitch guy, sinker, slider, changeup, and I don't think he's the kind of guy that can go to that changeup. It's more of a show pitch. I mean, it's something he'll throw when he's ahead the count. So basically, I mean, that leaves you with one pitch, one speed. Slider's a cement mixture. You can't throw in the strike zone. And not much on it right now. There's Trevor Story, who has singled to knock in a run and hit his 11th home run of the year, second in the league behind his teammate. Nolan Arenado, who just came in to score, but is only a couple hitters away from coming up again. That one in the dirt it bounces away from Posey but a late read for LeMahieu so he stays put. Buster got just enough of it. Well uh, maybe that's better than a hanger but he just has no feel for that pitch at all. But I mean that's what he has to do he's got to throw that thing down along the bottom of the strike zone. I mean you got a guy up there who strikes out more than anybody. I mean, this yeah. is a pure strikeout situation, so but you have to make good pitches. Like that. Yeah. That's outstanding two seam movement at 93 miles per hour coming back in and taking out the knees away. Throw that one again. Six run inning for Colorado still only one out. There's a swing and a miss. That's his best pitch right now the sinker and he's throwing two perfect ones to get to the one two advantage. Now here if you had your slider now you go out of the strike zone but I just don't think he's got confidence in it tonight. Not doing a whole lot. The best bet is staying with the sinker see what Posey calls. Giants want to see that number move up to twenty three right here. They need a strikeout bad. Story on the ground base hit with the infield pulled in that scores LeMahieu over to third Blackman so he couldn't get the strikeout. Trevor Story has got three different hits that have knocked in a run in this game. And the Giants I, it's, it's hard to explain isn't it but they have had way too many of these big innings that they just have not been able to get out of. It's happened a lot now. Well, they saw a 12 run inning in their uh, trip to New York. And that bullpen's closed up right now. The Giants are with seven men in their bullpen. They need to get some work out of Mazzaro. Cargo takes low. That almost looked like a changeup. That was a changeup. Okay, that's why it looked like one. Yeah. <laughs> Carlos Gonzalez two for three single double he scored two runs Rockies still have not had a strikeout in this game not one. Ooh, good pitch there. Did not miss by much boy when you have an inning going against you like it's going right now with seven runs on the board you want any help you can get from an umpire when you have a close pitch like that when you don't get it. That grinds you. In the dirt, another save by Buster. 3 0. If you walk Gonzalez, the bases are loaded for Arenado. And how's that going to end? Well, I mean, it, <laughs> it hasn't been too good lately it when he not. steps in against the Giants. So, you know, you, you, you better attack this guy. He ain't easy. No. Ball four, not close. So here comes Arenado with a chance to do big time damage. There's Blackman at third. 
He doubled in a run. Story, you knocked in a run at second. The walk to Gonzalez. All part of a seven run inning, and it's still going. Three career grand slams. And that one hits him. That forces in a run. That got him high and tight. And he's telling Buster, I didn't say anything. <laughs> I think Buster just want to make sure. Well, I mean, the last thing you want to do is hit a guy with the base of loaded. He's trying to jam him inside, trying to add on a little extra. Where does it get him? Oh, right in the triceps. Yeah. And that is the button. That hurts. You can't look cool when you get hit in the tricep at 92 miles an hour with sink on it. Ouch. It'll take your breath away. Clean your sinuses, though. I think he's breathing okay. Well, there goes Derek Law. I mean, at some point, and and this is not what the Giants want, but at some point, Mazzaro. He is really struggling out there. And now Gerardo Parra. Eight runs across here in the fifth. Problem is drilling a guy like that. You make everybody else on the bench coming up behind him a better hitter. Yeah. Kind of hones their focus on you because they want you to pay for it, the pain you put on their teammate. Base is still loaded. Parra was up there looking to do damage. Mazzaro's got to get that ball down. I mean, his sink is down around the knees. Like any other guy who gets ground balls, you don't get him bell high and above. And, and I mean, he's 27 pitches into this outing. I mean, this inning's running long for him, but right now he's got to concentrate on getting that ball down. 0 1. Far up, slaps at it. Change up. Right so now, that might be his best pitch. Well, Posey knows that slider isn't showing up, so why not? You have to do something to get a guy off the fastball. I mean, if the changeup's your best weapon, even if you don't have great confidence in it, you've got to throw it. Oh two. That one was a hanger right back up the middle base hit. And they're going to send Gonzalez around third. He'll score without a play. Two more runs have scored. It's a 10 run inning. With still only one out. It's happening again. I mean that was the only good thing about New York with 12 runs up there on the board we said that'll never happen again. never get it out of the way well I guess it's worse when you do it at home it is worse nowhere to hide right now here's Reynolds so what's this the 14th hitter of the inning 30 pitches into it. And that two strike swing of the bat from Parra, that was another hanging slider. Right up there. Ball one. And the other thing, too, you think about is, you know, it's a long haul back from Cincinnati, and everybody could be a little weary legged. This is not helping the situation for the defense. I mean, you can melt your defense's legs down with a long inning like this. Two and one. Do we need to check on our partner? You think Kipe's okay? He's asleep. <laughs> he fell asleep three hitters ago. He's all alone. Oh boy. That's a strike over the outside. Basically a half hour this half inning with still only one out. Reynolds reached on one of those errors. 
That's ball three. Now if he lets another guy get on, I mean, he'll be gone. So that's 47 pitches in the inning to get one out. To get one out. Two errors did not help that cause. 3 2. Reynolds smashes one to left. It's over Williamson, who plays the carom nicely. And that will mean only one run scores on that double. Arenado is in. Reynolds, an extra base hit. And Bruce Bogey didn't want to have to do this. But here he comes. Yikes. That's a lonely feeling. So another pitching change. Derek Law is going to try to get the Giants through this nightmare fifth. They trail 15 to 3. Today in the Bay, you can see news that's happening right now in weather and traffic every 10 minutes. Watch Today in the Bay, weekday starting at 4.30 a.m. on NBC Bay Area, Channel 11, Cable 3, and 703. Well, you do feel for Vin Mazzaro because he just did not have it. And uh, against this Rockies team, the way this inning went, the result was uh, predictably ugly. Still only one out. Here in the top of the fifth, and the new pitcher is Derek Law. This is the biggest inning the Giants have ever allowed in the history of this ballpark. 11 runs they've given up. They had never given up more than 10 in any single inning. And Law's got to do some work to make sure it stays at just 11. Well, he's the guy to do it. I mean, he's got strikeout stuff. Saw the numbers. Thought to a good start. It's a four pitch guy, a fastball to go a little bit 90s. Slider curveball changeup, although pretty much it's been that breaking ball. He calls it a slider. He opened up the at bat with with Walters. It looks a lot like a curve. Well, he's a high three quarter release. That one is topped foul, and he holds it with three fingers on the ball, four finger, middle finger. Ring finger all lay side by side as he grips that thing. And then when he goes over the top with it, the hand action is the hand action of a of a curveball, not a slider. But it, I mean, it's a great pitch. He's ahead of Walters 0 2. Another ball just barely top foul. Runner at third is Para. At second is Reynolds. They've each already hit twice in this inning. You got three different Rockies who have each scored a run in the inning. So three different Rockies have scored two different runs 
in this fifth inning. I guess that's how you get an 11 run inning. Well, you just can't give big league teams two extra outs an inning. It's just a uh, recipe for disaster. Pitch it for the strikeout. Another 0 2. High fastball was a little bit too high. Just kind of clean the sight lines there. I thought the Walters, look, it was going to be a big inning, damaging, but the Walters double when he had two strikes against him to knock in two runs and really fuel almost like a second rally of this. And that was a big hit. It was. And the game was still in the balance at that point. Struck him out. That's the first strikeout for a Giants pitcher in the game. Well, the Giants fans appreciate it. I mean, they always come to the ballpark thinking you may see something historical. And watching it anywhere, the Giants give up 11 runs, the most they've ever given up. I mean, that's not the kind of history that they were looking for. And so that young Giants fan stand up and say, we got one. Yeah. It's painful. Yep. So the pitcher comes up for the second time. Until that strikeout, he had made the only out of this uh, fifth inning. And you, you would uh, 50 plus pitches now. You could imagine Buster Posey's feeling it. Well, this is when you're happy. You got the. Pitcher hit Nate, but as we said before, he he can swing a little bit. He can. He rips a base hit into right center field. Unbelievable. Span cuts it off, but that's two more runs home, and it's worse than the inning in New York. Thirteen runs have scored here in the fifth. It's 17 to three, and this time it was the pitcher. Well, I, I think that's the insult to injury. But look, nobody in that Rockies dugout is feeling sorry for what's going on here. They're not apologizing. Well, you got to figure out a way to get that third out. Then we're really going to hear the sarcastic cheers. That's a strike. LeMayhew, who is three for three, but he's one for one in this inning. So let's see that. This is the 17th hitter of the inning. Tomlinson will make it the 17th and last. About says it all.
insurance and financial services for you and your business. Visit HefINS.com. MLB.TV Premium. Watch every out-of-market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. Includes a free subscription to AtBat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. On MLB.TV, that, that top of the fifth never happened. Never happened. Well, the most runs ever scored. And we could just take care of that. Oh, yeah. See, four to three. Other than the top of the fifth, it's a one run game. <laughs> well, <laughs> it is, uh, uh, you know, I, we saw 12 runs a week ago. I mean, it, I don't know. I don't Something know. You, you, you don't see every day. Just every fifth day. Here's a called strike to Matt Duffy. Well, that, that Friday night game, remember, part of what we were saying was in the midst of that game, just get out of here and with everybody healthy. And even that didn't happen. Joe Panic tweaked the groin muscle. The Giants are already playing shorthanded because of Panic, because of Pagan. Pence. Pence with the tight back. There's not a lot of places to turn. They've got two players that they will use tonight. Trevor Brown, and I'm sure we'll see him at some point tonight. Yeah. Connor Gillespie. Duffy one for two. Hits that one on the ground. It is a fair ball. And Arenado's got a chance to show off that arm. Not in time. Terrific effort by Nolan Arenado, but Duffy beats it out. Well, they're going to look at this one. And it's going to be close. Took a couple extra steps. I don't know what kind of grip he got out of that glove. I think he's safe. I don't think there's enough there to overturn it, but it was close. Safe. Yeah. So a two hit night so far for Duffy. Maybe only Arenado even has a chance. But he made it that close. Way inside to Buster. Posey's two for two. Interesting to see how the Rockies handle this one. Arenado, their big guy, got drilled by yeah. Pizarro up on the shoulder. If they feel compelled to retaliate. Well, this could be the guy. One superstar for another. And if you're keeping score, probably run out of ink and need a couple pins for this one. 13 runs at the top of the fifth. 10 hits, a couple of errors, one left on. Wow. See, now that, that the person with that scorecard, and there goes Duffy, ball in the dirt, and he'll make it. Person with that scorecard that we just showed has the same problem that you and I have. Okay, so you get through that. Now, where do you go for the sixth? There's no, you, you spill it over into the sixth when you're keeping score, when an inning goes on like that. You got one square left. Okay, all right. Is that Amy G? Oh, see? Ah, just move it forward. I like it. That's a good plan. Good job, Amy. The dirt ball three. Well, when you have a 14 run lead, it's not the time to be walking, guys. <laughs> it's a sentence that hasn't been spoken that often in the history of big league baseball. No. No, it has not. Good hitters count. Russin is again. He's just taken forever. We've seen this over and over in this game. 
Ball four. So, hey. It would be literally the greatest comeback of all time. Of all time. We would be able to say we were there to see yeah. it. And if it happened before the sixth inning, Dwayne Kuyper, we may lose him. I, I'm worried about him. I think in between the fifth and the sixth, I'm going to run over there and just check on him. Make sure he's okay. Oh, he's okay. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> John Miller on assignment uh, tonight. So it sets up a one man radio booth tonight. Yeah, John's in his hot tub while Kipe is kind of looking like that. Ball one to Brandon Belt. Well, I'm sure the Rockies would love for Russin to at least get three outs. Have a chance to be the winning pitcher. It's not like his night has been real smooth. The Giants. No outs in the fifth, have 10 hits. I see a ball did make the play. Yeah. Uh, Air. E10. Yeah. When it rains, it pours. You can make up for it by doing that. Burt Strain, our ball dude, the first base out. Belt was robbed of a hit in the first and singled cleanly to right field the second time up. You get a good swing going. That one right by Walters. It was called a strike. So I guess he got crossed up. Yeah, he just, he totally just missed it. Up. And this one thing, I mean, they're probably going to call the pass ball because it called a strike, but you can't blame a catcher. No. If he doesn't know what's coming, as you can see the look on his face, he's not very happy about what just happened. That was a good curveball. It's in the strike zone. Jim Reynolds says, yeah, it's in my zone. They just indeed rule the pass ball. I don't think that's fair. If it, you cross a catcher up, that has you can't penalize the catcher. It's not a good call. It should be a wild pitch. And I guess the point is the catcher always knows what the actual sign was. Always. <laughs> always. So it's one and two to Brandon Belt. That was a called strike. Okay, we may need one of those. Well, that'll make you feel better. Yeah, we might need one. Did he go? No. CB Buckner, the third base umpire, who we will see behind the plate on Sunday. All right, did he go? No. Well, that was the cross up pitch. <laughs> he definitely did, didn't go on did that one. He did not go on that one. <laughs> and the count is two and two to Belt. Duffy the runner at third Posey at second we got him this time so that's out number one with Brandon Crawford coming up and that'll tick belt off a chance at least to pad the stat sheet get a run batted in or more drawn by the wayside you're right though you have a runner at third base in less than two outs and you can't get him in as an RBI guy you're not happy. Yeah. So now Crawford has that same opportunity. Infield, of course, is going to play back with a 14 run lead. Maybe I could just leave that qualifier out for the rest of the night. No, bring it out there. Come on. <laughs> Again, it's we, we don't get to say that very often, thankfully. So it becomes a maintenance game is, is yep. really but for Bruce Pochi I mean he only has two guys a rip shot into right field base hit. So Duffy scores Posey holds on Crawford gets the run batted in. They cut the lead to 13. I right, take Take your chances, have a good at bat, see where it goes. Exactly. It's baseball. I mean, for, for everybody coming up here. Uh, 
And for Mac Williamson, who I think has been very frustrated with his at bats tonight, a chance to get the swing going again. He had two really good at bats in Cincinnati yesterday. Christian Bergman, bullpen is up in the fifth inning. And you can understand why. Strike one. Williamson's seen almost all off speed stuff, and there he got a first pitch fastball. He's not looking for a fastball. He kept there looking for something slow. Yeah. Strike two. We'd like to see the big fella get a hold of one. He would definitely throw this crowd. Williamson base hit. Well, not a home run, but for Mac Williamson, he'll take it. 17 to 5. Posey comes in to score. Nice opposite field at bat. Very nice. I think he's the type of hitter as he establishes himself as a major leaguer that is going to do that a lot. Well, Walt Weiss, the manager's coming out, so I don't know whether this is going to be a stern talking to or if this is going to be it. Well, I, I would be surprised if he took him out because he qualifies for a win if he can get through the fifth. But it may be a challenge to him. You know, Walt Weiss knows the deal. I mean, you don't want to, you want your. Start to staff to think that you're going to get a chance to work through something like this, but he may have just said you get one more hitter. Yeah, and I think at that point, nobody can blame a manager if he makes the move. Okay, you give the guy another shot. But he's thinking about it. I mean, young pitchers, especially, boy, that fifth inning is a different inning. It'll change your rhythm. Here's Kelby Tomlinson. One for two with a double. Strike one. Now, Kite made the point a few days ago, and it's really true, and it becomes more and more true. You give him regular at bats, and he becomes a different guy. Yeah, no doubt. He gets reps. I mean, he's a better producer when he's an everyday player. Understandably, young players, the hardest thing for them to learn. When you come up out of the minor leagues, you're an everyday player. Now you come up and they tell you, we want you to be a bench player, which means you may go 10 days before you get a start. You may go a week where you get two at bats. And it's very, very difficult to maintain your strike zone, maintain your skills. Erosion creeps into your game. Now, an older player like Connor Gillespie, much better suited for that role. But since Kelby Thompson has come aboard, he's played every day. I mean, he had six hits in the three games in Cincinnati. That's a good series. One, two. He takes the change up. It goes right through Walters. That. Moves both runners up. It takes away the double play possibility. And Walters, I, he, he hasn't had to catch a 13 run inning, but uh, it's been a long night for him. He's been all over the place. I'm sure he's a little ticked off at himself, but I suppose he would understand. You, you, there's some attrition if you're in the squat. Just pitch after pitch after pitch, blocking balls. Every third pitch is in the dirt. Way outside, full count. Not even close. Could be it for Russin here. Christian Bergman, he's ready to go. He yep. stopped throwing down in the Rockies bullpen. So three and two. Not close again. Ball four. And I bet that's it for him. We'll see.
The walk loads of bases. Here comes Gregor Blanco. Maybe not. Blanco's a left-handed hitter. Maybe that'll buy him one more hitter. It would be a rough pill to swallow if your pitcher and your team got you 17 runs and you couldn't finish the fifth. It, it would be something to stick around for yeah. a while. But I, you couldn't blame Walt Weiss if he's ready to move on. Way well, inside. You know what Walt Weiss is thinking about? I mean, here's a young guy that we've taken out of the bullpen. We put him in rotation. The pitch count is yeah. what's grinding away at Walt Weiss. I mean, he wants his kid to get this. This uh, opportunity to get a win if he complete five innings, but you also don't want him to get hurt. Blanco, a little squib shot with the defense, nowhere to be found. Williamson around third, he'll score. Crawford already crossed home plate, 17 to seven. Giants will take it. <laughs> Wouldn't it be something? Crazy. He doesn't want to do it, but he's going to do it. Yeah, the pitch cast just going to get this kid out of the game. End of story. But that's a rough pill to swallow. That really will is. eat at him for a long time, I bet. Well, the Giants' offense off the deck, trying to make this a ball game. 17 to 7 when it's time for a change. Think speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune up and brake experts. Tomorrow with game two, and the Giants take on the Rocks, 7 o'clock, pregame live at 6 30 right here in CSN Bay Area. Plus, complete pre and post game coverage with Giants insider Alex Pavlovich, the home of the authentic Giants fan, is right here at CSN. Well, new pitcher Bergman, 17 to 7, we're in the fifth inning. Derek Law has to hit, and he offered at that one, strike one. The numbers for Christian Bergman. Seventh time he's come in, 0 and 3 with a 7.62 ERA. He's given up 22 base runners in 13 innings. Good stuff though, 16 strikeouts. It's a little 90s fastball with four pitches, curveball, slider, changeup. He went for that one, strike two. If you had a healthy bench, the Giants have three different players tonight on the active roster on the bench who are. If not totally unavailable, close to it. If you had a, a, a bullpen where you could get something else, you might make a move here. Walter tried to frame that one. Pence back tightness. Hey, I think in a emergency type situation, he could be in there. Bruce Bochy thinks he'll be back out there tomorrow. Law makes contact. LeMayu will take the shore out at first, two down. So he gets him over. A productive out. Yeah, 
a face hit here I would absolutely make him think. It would. In that Rockies dugout. It would. Lots of time left. Giants down by 10, but they put a six spot or more on this inning. <laughs> that rally cap working <laughs> right now. <laughs> it's the fifth inning. We got the rally caps on. <laughs> Everybody, everybody here is thinking the same thing. What if? What if tonight is the night for the greatest comeback of all time? Strike one to Denard Span. This would it would go a long way toward at least thinking a little harder about that. They're prepared. Get the two flaps down hat going. That's like a built-in rally cap. All in one to span. Hits that one softly. Not going to be an easy play. LeMayhew throws him out. The Giants send nine to the plate and score four runs, but they're still down 10 through five. Warriors playoff central Warriors in Portland for game three hour long coverage begins Saturday 4 30 p.m. on CSN Bay Area before and after every Warriors playoff game Papa St. Ross and Galena provide in depth coverage the home of the authentic Warriors fan is CSN they're doing a great job Warriors up 2 0 got to wait a few days sounds like Curry will not play in game three. Get him fully healthy. You got the 2 0 series lead. Hey, as long as they're winning, he yeah. doesn't need to play. Uh, I, I'm, I'm with you. Top of the order here. It is the sixth inning, and yeah, that's the score if you're just tuning in. Giants did make a change. Buster Posey will sit the rest of this one out. Trevor Brown in the catch. He got a game's worth of catching Buster did in the first five innings in the fifth inning alone practically. Strike two. Blackman one for three. And I, 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 I can't believe it is a sacrifice. That's a bad call. That one just a bit high. I, I do find this hard to believe. The Rockies, that 13 run fifth inning, the only reason I say that is they played for 20 years at altitude. That's the most runs they've ever scored in a single inning. Little jam shot. Tomlinson circles around it, throws him out. Nice play. Now you look at all the three guys in the infield right now who are right handed Duffy, Crawford, and Kelvin Thomas and they're all drafted as shortstops. You don't get drafted as a shortstop if you don't have a good arm. And he really needs to have a strong arm on this throw. Goes completely down to the ground. Comes up, 
Nice exchange and rifles a strike over the belt. And he's still thinking about the air he made the fifth. Two errors, a big reason why the Rockies. So is this guy. Story in that fifth inning alone went two for two with a homer and an RBI single. Scored two runs. What a rookie year. It's taken a month and nobody's talking about Troy Tulowitzki. It's amazing. We'll see Tulowitzki on Monday. Blue Jays are coming here for interleague play. I'm not saying that this guy is going to necessarily be that good. Tulowitzki was one of the best in the game for a long while, but Blue Jays will bring offense here. That's for sure. Well, his command a little erratic for a guy who's usually so pinpoint. One two got him to chase that change up in the dirt. And let's check in with Amy G. All right gentlemen I have an update on a couple of Giants relievers George Contos will be facing hitters tomorrow and is scheduled to pitch on Sunday with Triple A Sacramento for Sergio Romo he threw off flat ground today a bullpen on flat ground told me that he threw it about 50 to 60 percent he is slated to throw off of a mound on Monday Bruce Bochy saying he's about three to four weeks away Dave. Well I, I for Contos for both guys I think it would qualify as good news. Thanks Amy. Two down, nobody on for Carlos Gonzalez. Uh, you're right. Getting those two guys back, that that would be a tremendous shot in the arm. Shot with the defense right there. Way to go, Ron Lotus. Woohoo! That's a one-two-three inning. Giants comeback continues when we come back. Giants baseball on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Toyota. It's Toyota time for big savings on legendary Toyota quality. Take a test drive today. Toyota, let's go places. By Kelly Moore Paints, celebrating 70 years as your neighborhood paint store. And by Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience TV. From San Francisco, Dave Fleming, Mike Kruko, bottom of the sixth. Matt Duffy against Bergman, the second pitcher of the game, and Duffy crushes one. Left center field, Blackman can't get it, and it's one hop against the wall. Here comes the Giants' offense. On another night, they'd just be taking it to the Rockies. On this night, we can only dream. Yeah, go out and have some fun. It's a yeah, ball game. That's it. Have a good at bat. She's not leaving. Game of bed. Duffy's three for four. He's putting his swing back together. Here's Trevor Brown's first at bat of the game. Maybe that'll be part of the comeback story. Even though they took Buster Posey out of the lineup. 
And Posey never made an out. Doubled, singled, knocked in two, walked, scored a run. Bergman to Brown, strike one. Giants have 14 hits with nobody out in the sixth inning. You know, even though when you get a, a game like this, 17 7, you know, it still means the world to this guy in the batter's box. Sure. Generous call, strike two, Trevor Brown. Can't believe it. Hey, Rook, you know, you, you <laughs> get opportunities. Well, it's a big deal. Maybe he's saying that to Jim. Did you realize, Jim, this is a big at bat for me? Hey. It is. It's going on your baseball card. Oh, two. Although, not everybody gets a baseball card now. Not everybody. Which would I, I found that out a few years back. It really upset me. You used to be able to tell how many years a guy was in the big leagues by how many baseball cards he had. But now, not everybody gets one. And I don't think that's right. On the ground. Story throws out Brown. If you if you make it to the big leagues in a certain year, you should have a baseball card for that year. You should. Seems pretty simple. Brandon Belt. I mean, we hear these stories. You know, Archibald Boone like Grant. You know, he got to the big leagues with the New York Giants. Never got in a bat. And that's tragic. And then other guys. They get to the big leagues and they, they never get into a game as a pitcher. Yeah, Derek Law's dad. It's a tragic story. And then the other guys get to the big leagues and they don't get a baseball card. I think it's it's equal to not getting a bat or not getting any pitched. Or even an appearance. All you get is a foul ball. Oh, and two to belt. We're having fun. Bachelorette party. Come to the yard. Our bride to be. Not leaving early. Oh yeah. You got one of these? I do. Gamers. Cinco de Mayo. They may, they may be running out of gas, that group. That's a little flare to Arenado. Two down. Hmm. So there's some history for you. First time in a seven game span that any team in history has allowed two different 12 or more run innings. Yep, Reno Fly Shop, great place. Crawford crushes one. And it's foul into San Francisco Bay. I thought that was number 69. We haven't had a splash home run here in a long time. Long time. And I thought that was going to be it. That's an impressive strike. All right, how foul was it? It was definitely foul, but not by much. I mean, two. it's pretty cool though. I mean, baseball, you can hit a foul ball and get the crowd buzzing. And this definitely had a buzzing. No question, it was foul. That guy tried to move the foul pole over. I saw him. He was pulling. I appreciate the effort. Now it's on two with Duffy at second. Just inside. All uh, right, just because it's fun, the splash cam, even on a foul ball, it's cool. Strike one. It's the greatest camera shot in sports. It is. It, it, it's a good one. It, it's a good one. 
Strike three called. Well, let's hope Kipe is still kicking over there because he's coming back to the TV side. See you, Mike. Hey, thanks for talking to you. Game summary is brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. And uh, pretty much, Rockies 17 runs, 17 hits, no errors. Giants 7 runs on 14 hits, 2 errors. We are going to the top of 7. It's 17 to 7. And once again, here's Dwayne Kuyper. And the pitch to Arenado is driven to left. And right there is Mac Williamson, and he'll make the catch. So a one pitch out. And you might see a lot of guys going up there hacking at the first pitch. Blowouts do have a tendency to close rather quickly. So here's Para. Shoots it foul. Talked about how when Trevor Brown took his at bat, I mean, that's a big deal for him. It's an at bat. I mean, I know it's a 17 7 game, but in his mind, it's it's one nothing. Rookies. Well, same thing for Derek Law. I mean, how you do every time, no matter what the score is, that's how you're judged, that's how you're rated, that's how you elevate in the bullpen or sink down a couple rungs on the ladder. Good breaking ball. Plus, you always think that a bad game and you're going to get sent down. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the nature of the beast. The Gotham Club behind the scoreboard. You know, that, fifth, right field. that fifth inning. My body in the KMBR booth. Yeah. My mind in the Gotham Club. <laughs> One hour and one minute, the fifth inning. Having a margarita on Cinco de Mayo? We're good. Yeah, what I wanted to do is hold up the sign that I plastered to the Rockies broadcasters that said, Uncle. Well, I mean, it was a historical inning. Most runs the Rockies had ever scored in an inning in their franchise history. And not at Coors Field? And not at Coors And in this ballpark, which is, you know, not. You don't think of this being a hitter's ballpark. But hey, you made it, partner. He's rocking it. One and two to Para. 
Crawford's going to have a tough play, and he'll make it. You know, we you watch this guy every day, and the beauty of what Crawford does is soft and quick hands, and the exchange here is what makes him special. I mean, that thing did not stay in the glove very long. Yeah, he almost flips it into his throwing yeah, hand. I think he did flip yeah. it into his throwing hand. Yep, he did. Yeah, that's brilliant. Let's go, Glover is what it is. Reynolds has a couple of hits. Out of play. Lucille making friends. Beauty but Lucille is is he or she doesn't know the score. No. Lucille. Well he's got the hat on and that was the giveaway today. Lucille bobbleheads here on Seco de Mayo. Reynolds says are you serious I swung at that. Yep. I had a ball in the fifth inning right there. We wanted it to be the good news on it. So here's Mac Williamson. Outside to Mac Williamson who's one for three. See this guy get a hold of one just to see how far he can do it. He has the power to hit the coke bottle. That's how strong this guy is. Skies this one out into right center field. So Williamson retired, and here's Tomlinson. It looked like a pop up, but then it carried out into fairly deep right center field.
and tight to Tomlinson. One ball and no strikes. So Corey Garrett up again. Second time he's had a hump tonight. Down the right field line. Foul. And I think he can close the books on Derek Lott and I did a nice job coming out of the pen. I had it. I know. I know. Oh, hit me in the bad spot. The hands? The hand. Should have brought his glove. Yeah, I agree. Any kind of glove. Or use his hat. Outside. Two and two. On the ground, it's Arenado. We'll check out the Silver Slugger three pack. Access to three games starting at 99 bucks, including the 20, June 25th game against the Phillies. And we're giving away Madison Bumgarner Silver Slugger bobbleheads for the first 40,000 fans, courtesy of Chevron. Then the pack will also include a limited edition coin commemorating our three recipients of the 2015 Silver Slugger Award. So, if you want information, go to Silver Slugger Three Pack. Visit sfgiants.com slash mini packs. Blanco pops it up. And it's going to be out of play. Blanco tonight, two for three, knocked in a pair of runs. And the next pitch is down low. Well, her enthusiasm has not dampened him, nor hers. No. You cannot put that hat on without having a good attitude. It is impossible. <laughs> Fouls it out of play. Yeah, that's true. Huh? No denying that. Yeah, she's got her Giants jersey on. What do you think, Twinkies? I would say that that's a pretty good guess. The one two to Blanco and Blanco shoots it foul. Well he's got his Jeffrey Leonard two flap down hat. Although he's got his two flaps up. That hat will make you cry. That's a good one. Low. Anthony coming up. 17 7. Rocky.
those two stories. It happened May 21st, 05. Giants unveil one Marischal statue in a pregame ceremony near left field dual bridge. The Giants beat the A's 3 to 2. And it was a good day. Tyler Walker with the save. Here's Garen to Walters and a call strike. Yeah, the first time they wore the Hagantes uniforms. Now they've got him on a night right now. It's Corey Garen who's bringing his Hagante jersey into the game. 12th appearance for Garen. 2 3 8 ERA. He's done a nice job. 11 base runners, 11 and a third. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service, your oil change tune up and brake experts. One ball and one strike. She will not leave early. Way outside. Duffy has that one crawl up his arm a little bit. Check in with Amy G. And earlier this week, we saw some superhero strength from Jeff Smarja when he took a bat and broke it over his leg in frustration after striking out. Talked to a couple of his teammates today, Joe Panic, telling me he's never tried it because he knows he won't be able to break it. He did say, though, that he thinks other players that could do it, Bumgarner, Josh Osich and Hunter Strickland. So guys, I went to Hunter Strickland. I said, have you ever done it? He said, yeah, he sure has. He also said when Samarja did it, he loved it. And Panic and Strickland agreed, if you're going to do it, you better go all in and you better break it. Guys? And you better have a thin handle bat. Yeah, and go more towards the thin part of the bat when you start to slam it over your knee. Bergman retired. I mean, you think about it, Joe Panic never did it. Well, I mean, all of his amateur career, he always had a, a metal bat in his hand. Yep. Now, if you really want to impress me, do it with a metal bat. Yeah. Just really just don't try it. <laughs> no. No, I don't I, know. That would not be good. But it is a manly thing to do. LeMay who taps it foul. Joe Panic, who has a chance to be in the lineup tomorrow night, rehabbing a slight groin strain, a grade one groin strain that he suffered in the New York series. Had to be disappointing for Joe Panic. I mean, it, it happened. In, in the first game of the series, he missed the next two games. Why is that such a big deal? Well, he's from New York. Always does well when he's in New York. Yeah, he really got his career going last year in New York. Or not last year, the year before. 214. But hey, this is a good year. He gets to go back. Giants make another trip back. To New York to play the Yankees in July after the All Star break. So Joe Panic will get another shot. Two and one to LeMahieu. Two and two to LeMahieu. Nice little front door cutter taking out that inside corner. He'll give you three looks. He's got a fastball that. Put big time sink on it. We've seen him with velocity wise up 92 93. That's pretty special with sink. He's got a slider and change up. And Garen spears it. And that's going to end the inning. Garen with a 1 2 3 8. It remains 17 to 7.
Tune immediately after Giants baseball for Easter and Giants post game live highlights reaction analysis it's all coming up right after this game. Seventeen seven. It's time for a change. Think speedy. Oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune up and brake experts. So Scott Oberg, the new pitcher for the Rockies, sixth time he's coming to a ball game. He's off to a good start. Five, one point six nine ERA and five and a third. And you're going to see a healthy fastball. It'll go a little bit nineties. He's got a curveball slider to change up. Oberg, twenty six years old. Just a little over a year's time at the big league level. Christian Adamas comes in. To place third base, Nolan Arenado's night has concluded. Here's Connor Gillespie, and he takes wide, 1 0. Yeah. Gillespie. Yeah, let's go, Jay. Three hits and 10 at bats. Swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. Span to follow. One and two. Good hard slider. Think about. Connor Gillespie is a lot of guys in this Giants team. He's a good two-strike hitter. Well, we saw a lot of hits from both sides in this game. The only hitters had two strikes on him. Gillespie stays alive. Gillespie broke his bat, at least broke the end of it. This was the home run he hit yesterday. It's a good thing he hit it in Cincinnati and not here. Yeah, here you get a double, maybe. Maybe a triple. But hey, he hit it all the way to the dugout to get a bat. Yeah, all the way to the other end of the dugout. <laughs> he didn't break many bats. I mean, the home plate umpire, Jim Reynolds, was following him the entire way. If there was ever a game that needed speeding up, this would probably be one of them. It'd be a qualifier. No gloves, a little dirt, that's all I need. Good. And it was worth it. Good two strike at bat. You go that far to get a bat, come up with a hit. Yeah. They're, they're, they're going to overplay me one side. I'm going to think the other way and pitch him away. I mean, the way they pitched him, it's completely away from the defense. But we always talk about, you know, what Connor Gillespie does so well is he goes with the location, which to see a, a shift on the right side is a bit of a surprise. Let the ball travel. What's the easiest area to defend? The pitch at the belt. And he defended it well. Here's Span. And the pitch is high. Span with one hit. As the pitch is wide. Check the two hits for Denard Span and four at bats. Not even tired. How long is she going to make it out of the parking lot? Baybridge. Depending on where they're parked. And a base hit to left. That's a three hit night for Denard Span. First time he's gone the opposite way. Yeah, Duffy's got three hits today. Well, I think your goal right now, you're down by 10 runs. Get into their bullpen some more. Out hit him. Yeah, that's right. To win the 
the war of, uh, of hits. They're trailing 17 to 16 right now. But get their closer up and start throwing. That's your goal. And then get them in the game. Duffy looking for a four hit night. Well, I don't even know if that's had it to. Well, it would scare me to think that's his real hair. To right field, giving Chase is Gonzalez. He will come in and make the catch. One out. And that'll bring up Trevor Brown. Brown had one at bat, and that was a ground ball to short in the sixth inning. No, that's not the first time he's worn that. Belt to follow. Low. One ball and no strikes. Out of play. It's one ball and one strike. I mean, what can you do with a baseball cap just to inspire your team? Well, there's your answer. If that doesn't inspire you, I, I don't know what does. Judging by what I just saw there, she's driving home. <laughs> Good call. Yep. Center field hit right at Blackman. Two outs and Belt will hit. Second generation rally caps. What do you think Todd about rally caps? Mom know. or dad? Uh, probably mom. Belt has one hit and four at bat. A single in the third. And he takes wide for a ball. One and oh. Crawford is on deck. We're in the eighth inning. Coming to you from Coors Field here in Denver. <laughs> well, you look at the scoreboard, it does make you feel that way. 33 hits, 24 runs. When Coors Field opened up, well, actually, when the Rockies opened up play in Denver in 1993, then they played at Mile High Stadium. And this is commonplace. Oh, this was every day. Belt takes low. And if you liked offense, which Back then, a lot of people did. They drew over four billion. It was remarkable the wave of enthusiasm that greeted this Rockies team when they brought Major League Baseball to a Major League city. Belt shoots one into the seats, a souvenir. And then they moved over to Coors Field in 1995. That changed it for everybody. Yeah, if you don't have your glove. Use your beer cup. A little wet. We're good. Two and two to belt. Because when Coors Field opened up their doors, everybody that went in there said, I want to get that, I want to get that, I want to get that. And one by one, new ballparks were built up in every city in the National League, excluding Chicago with Wrigley Field and L.A. 
the Dodger Stadium. Other than that, the other 13 teams, all new yards. And most of the American League. I mean, it was an unbelievable renaissance. And uh, Coors Field, Camden Yards. Yeah, Camden Yards was probably the first. Got him, and that's going to end the inning. Ninth inning coming up. It's 17. Seven. Game is brought to you by Honda, and we think that uh, Trevor Story, the shortstop for the Rockies tonight, is that gentleman. A three for five night, which included his 11th home run of the year. And he had two hits in that 13 run fifth inning. So the story for Trevor Story three for five, a home run, three RBIs. That makes him our player of the game, brought to you by Honda. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune up and brake experts. Hunter Strickland, the new pitcher now for the Giants. 13th time he's come in, and he's got some things he's working on. Mainly a little more consistency to the strike zone with that breaking ball. It's a hard thrower. So ever since he's come into the big leagues, he's really brought flames with him. Connor Gillespie stays in the ball game now. He goes to first base. Brandon Belt was not thrown out of the game. So this hit high into center field. And Span will put it away. This is what Brandon Belt was unhappy with. Yep, I know it's a lopsided score, but come on. Well, you can understand how upset he was. I mean, that's not bad. He was taking it serious. He didn't want to see the strike zone change. And it was definitely a pitcher strike. Here's Trevor Story. Pitches down low. Hey, the Seagulls are here. Yep. They're hungry. Yeah, they're. They are waiting for the final out of this game. The 2 0 to Story, and he follows that fastball straight back. 
You get asked the question all the time. How do the Seagulls know it's the ninth inning? Well, we don't know. They just know. Out of play down the right field line. But it is definitely a ballpark that you would consider bringing a an umbrella to, even if it's sunshiny and with no threat of rain. Those are a couple of veterans right there. Well, especially if you're in the bleachers, you you do have to be prepared to go home with some stuff on you that you didn't have when you came to the yeah, park. Yeah, yeah. And we know that by looking at our cars, which are parked right over the fence down the left field line. Yep. Cover your heads. Run, Forrest, run. <laughs> I think I think the birds do it on purpose to move people out. Tomlinson, better hurry. Got him. Trevor Story can run a little bit. He can do a lot of things. Yeah, well, now you're cooking. Break out your serapi. Not a problem. That'll work. If I can tell you if I were sitting out there with my wife where we would be in the car. <laughs> hey, we've been hit. We know how it feels. It's not something you should laugh at. It's it's real. Here's Ben Paulson. Span moving back. Let's hope he doesn't get hit and that'll end the inning. Bottom of the ninth coming up. 17 7. Tonight, right after Giants post game live, right here on CSN Bay Area. Tonight, you'll get Giants highlights and club out reaction. You'll get a Curry update, and Ratto will be in Portland. And they'll be talking about that. Shark Fritz, game four reaction and analysis. Ratto's in Portland? Yeah. Wow, lucky Portland. Did you ever party with Ray Ratto? Oh, oh absolutely. My goodness. The party never ends. It never ends. Polson's in left, Parra's in right, Ratto's in Portland. Here's Crawford. And Crawford takes outside for a ball 1 0. Tell you what, I, I, put, I can put together a pretty good group of sports writers that. 
put together in one room to have a party. Bud Geraci. Oh. Bruce Jenkins. Oh. <laughs> How about those three? Come on. Ann, have Ann drop by. Ann Killian. Crawford goes the other way, and he's going to test Paulson. Paulson puts it away. Well, that used to be what happened on every road trip. I mean, teams used to travel with the beat riders on the same plane. And that was all through our career. Now it never happens. Never. Here's Mac Williamson. Williamson skies one to right. And when it comes down, Parr is going to catch it. Is this the out we've all been waiting for? This is the one. And if you're Tomlinson, he's going to fight this one like it's the last out of the season. And he should make a statement. Get somebody else in there. Get their bullpen in the game. Keep it moving. I always thought that blowouts told you a lot about a guy. If they phoned in at bats or if they took a personal. I mean, you want to be the type of guy that takes a personal. Person. Takes a strike. He's got a hit tonight and a walk. Look out. I may have had some attention behind it. If you're in a giant uniform, you're going to think it was. No one there now got hurt early in the game by Vin Mazzaro. the ball game. It took Oberg a chance to find it, but when he does, he throws the first, and that's the ball game. So this one was interesting to say the least. It was a 13 run fifth inning. That's right, 13 run fifth inning for the Rockies. And game one goes to Colorado, and now the Giants will start looking forward tomorrow. Forget about this one. Yeah, it's over. Tonight it was a sort of an aberration but it turned out to be a, a historical game. This is the most runs that the Rockies ever scored in a single inning and it wasn't at Coors Field. Yeah. It happened here and an oddity but that's been yeah, I glad I was here for this one. Final score Rockies 17 Giants 7. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. East Insurance Giants post game live with interviews in the wrap. That's going to start right now.